So hello guys, it's great that most of you turn on the cameras. I'm happy about that, but if you didn't, doesn't matter. So today it's about acute respiratory distress syndrome. This is a very crucial thing. And if I will start right away, it's very deadly. Like 40% of people die if they have this. So it's a, it's a very serious, very serious situation. So ARDS, it used to be called adult respiratory distress syndrome. Now they're using the same abbreviation, but better it's to use the term acute respiratory distress syndrome. And by the way, there are very or many similarities with another syndrome, which is called RDS, and that's seen in children in newborns, okay? And I'm gonna have a comment on that, okay? But anyways, and I will already say now, both of them have hyaline membranes, and that's what pathologists love, you know. In both of these, you can see hyaline membranes. Maybe I blowed my point or like the main questions, but anyways, remember, if someone speaks to you during the pathology exam, there are hyaline membranes in alveoli everywhere. If you cut the, the lungs later, there are hyaline membranes. And we'll, we'll come back to it in both of the cases. Anyways, before we start, I should define another thing, and that is a Horowitz index. And I talked to some of you, so some of you know it, but it's used in the definition of ARDS. That's why I'm going to tell you a bit about it. And it's a very smart thing. And why do we use this index? It's also called the PF ratio. Okay. So Horowitz, this guy, uh, he published it in the 70s. And the synonym is PF ratio. And when do we use this index? Every time you supplement oxygen okay so every time the patient gets more oxygen than from the air you use the Horowitz index and the cool thing about it, this is you can set the patients on a similar line because of course the ones that are getting oxygen already are cheating okay so they're cheating and they're getting more oxygen although maybe their lungs are malfunctioning already and you can compare someone with oxygen and without oxygen in terms of the functionality of the lungs. And this out of its index sort of uh, like solves this problem that you can get an idea that even if a patient receives oxygen because you don't want him to die, so you give him oxygen, but you can get a pretty nice idea how it is with the lungs, how they are functional, okay? So, and it's very simple. What it is, you put a, in a ratio, you put the partial pressure of oxygen in arteries, which are the arterial pressure, so basically part of the astrup or the blood gases. So you have to take arterial blood and measure it. And you divide it by percentual fraction of the oxygen in the air, okay? So the, it's this. And what does it mean? Well. You use the comma over there in the percentage. So 21% means 0.21, okay? So normally, let's say I'm now very healthy. So my lungs are functioning 100%. So if you will take my blood now, the arterial, it will get 100 tors, yeah? Or millimeters of mercury. That's what, what you can measure. Some of you are having 90 now. It doesn't matter. 95, it's, well, uh, 98, let's say. 98 to 100, it's fine. So, but for the, let's, let's say the simple mathematics, let's use 100. And if you divide it by the air that I'm breathing over here, which should be 21%, or let's say right would be, uh, right would be, okay, a bit less maybe because I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't have open windows over here, but it doesn't matter. Let's make it 20%. So 100 divided by 0 0.20 is how much? It's 500. Okay, and remember, 500, that's ideal number, but let's say the normal range of the Horowitz index or the PF ratio is 300 till 500, okay? So I should have now like more towards 500, but anything above 300 is pretty fine. So this is in case we're breathing normal air, but let's say if I would have 100, again, so you would take blood gases, and if you didn't see the patient and know nothing about it, you would think it's fine, he's totally fine. 
But look at that. If you would be giving me 50% of oxygen, the fraction, so 0.5, so how much I would have? 200. And 200 is already a pretty serious small function. Of, so you divide 100 by 0.5 and it's two, 5 and it's 200. And that's pretty serious lung damage, obviously, or malfunction of the, of the lungs. Okay? So, and the funny thing is, if you sort of would like to see, like, in reality, how much the partial pressure of oxygen in arteries would be in theoretically or you, you have some idea so if, if this patient who has 100 millimeters of mercury but he gets 50 percent of oxygen and so the horovitz is 200 so you can sort of you know to get the idea you can multiply you know do you did backwards and you but you, you multiply by 0.21 and how much is that? It's like 42. So basically, if th this guy wouldn't be getting O2, but of course the lungs would be working more. Okay, so it's not so precise. But anyway, this patient, which is pretty sick patient in terms of ventilation and, and oxygenation of uh, blood, this patient with normal oxygen would very likely have 42 millimeters of mercury if he wouldn't get the... 50% oxygen. Get it? Although, of course, he would be, you know, he would be trying more to get more oxygen. He, so he would have a tachypnea, definitely, etc., etc. But it's sort of a way how you can think about it, okay? So this is Horowitz in next, okay? And we're going to come back to it very soon. So remember Horowitz. And basically use the Horvitz every time someone gets oxygen. So it depends. It could be the like emergency unit or anywhere. If you give them like oxygen or glasses, okay, or masks every time you use the Horvitz index, okay? Okay, so let's go for the acute respiratory distress syndrome. So, so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.